again, three episodes in a row on the Ducati. Whether I'm going to be able to keep that up, I don't know. But I'm going to try. No, I'm not going to try. No. I'm going to start bringing some other content. But for today, the Ducati Monster. And I'm kind of looking at it here because it's done. I'm filming this after I've done the work, which is not usually the way I do things. I usually do the intro first and then do the work. But I just wanted to get to it. As soon as I left the last video, I just carried on. And so, this is the intro for this video. What we're going to do today is use that split mould that I created in the last episode, clean it out, shape it, make it obviously finger friendly because I've already busted my knuckles and everything. Fiberglass has pretty much ripped my hands to shred and I've got so many fiberglass splinters in my hands, it's unreal. So clean that out, then create a prototype tank. Now I know that it's not going to be perfect. The, the mould, I should say, or the prototype, I should say, should be a perfect replica of what we've already got in the split mould. But the split mould isn't perfect because it's picked up all imperfections from the clay. The clay wasn't perfect and so what I'm essentially left with is back to square one where I've just got all the imperfections with the clay. I mean, I might as well be sat here having spray painted the clay black. But no, the reason for doing this prototype tank is to actually, first of all, see if it does fit and secondly, use this five glass prototype then to skin it and perfect it with isopon filler. So I've got an absolute smooth plug then for the proper mold that'll then be for the carbon fiber tank. I'm gonna smooth it out with some 1200 grit and that is where I'm at. So this is today's video on creating this prototype tank. And before I forget, for those of you interested in creating your own fiberglass glass moulds and carbon fibre moulds or anything, I got all my stuff from easycomposites.com, there is a link down below. Thank you very much to the guys that sorted me out with these. If you are interested in knowing more about this and the process and everything like that, then click the link below. But, now to the important bit, the prototype. So I've cleaned it all out now, and then I've put these bolts here. I've, you might have seen, I was using a six mil bit, just to put these bolts through. They're all stuck now, all clamped in place, and so now I can turn it over, and I can start putting the PVA release agent in here. What I will do is just ever so slightly go over that little crack there, so you can see the little crack there. Go over that with a bit of filler wax. There's a little hole in there, a little one in there, and just a little crack in there as well. Just go over it with some filler wax. And I might actually go over that bit as well because that's gonna cause us issues when we're trying to split it up. That's a little bit of uh, infection. And what I will do is finally cut these little nasty edges off so it's nice and clean. Can see I've gel coated that twice now. A little bit of fiberglass strand on here, only because I was measuring up this chop strand mat here. And there's a little bit of pooling going on, but I'm not too fussed about that. Sorted. See how two coats actually fares out against the one coat I put on previously. Let's add this now.
Monday morning. Bank holiday Monday morning. I think it's about half six in the morning. Having a morning brew. I kind of cheated. Oh, I didn't really cheat. In a nutshell, I was having trouble uh, getting the split mold off. Not really trouble, but it was a little bit more stuck than what it should be. When I'll be doing the final mold and actual tank, I'll be using a different release agent to this PVA stuff. This PVA stuff is fine for the clay. It's exactly what I needed for the clay. But it is a little bit sticky on this, only because it's an adhesive release agent. So even though it does release and it stops the two gel coats bonding together, it is pretty sticky. So after, I think it was late last night, um, probably about half past eight, the sun had gone down. There wasn't that much lighting around, so I didn't really have my camera on. But I did start prizing about and this came off. So that is the first half of the prototype. Now it didn't come off that easy, trust me. The second side is still quite stuck on there. But I just thought I'd show you that anyway. It's come out pretty neat. It feels like I've gone back to square one because I'm at exactly the same stage as I was with the clay. Obviously, this is not clay. This is a lot more rigid. Let's split the other part off and we've got our prototype tank. Got both split moulds out of the way now, and we're left with this. How cool is that? You can see a lot of residue. I've got the filler wax there, bits of clay which I'd already left, especially here on the mould. What I'm going to do now is just quickly wash it all down. It isn't the most perfect of pieces, only because, as I mentioned before, it does I mean, it pretty much essentially is the clay. You can even see the little teeth of where I was using a, a toothed comb just there, just to fill it out. It is exactly as the clay is, with all its imperfections and everything. It's a base now. I can actually see if this works as a prototype and then fill it all up, make it smooth, make all these lines perfectly straight. These split molds here, pretty much just gonna keep as a trophy now. That's all. That is all that's gonna be useful for now just as a trophy to put up in the workshop. Let's clean it. And here it is looking a bit better. Cleaned up a lot of it, I'm gonna clean up more anyway, but it's worked out really well. Symmetry is there it works i've left this little section here just at the moment because this some of you might know the ducati monster this is where your key barrel is it sticks out there and the key barrel does come out here so these little flaps should really go but i've kept this at the moment because i'm wondering if there's a way i can actually have this mold on top of the key barrel and then have a an m-lock motor gadget m-lock there it's just a thought that is looking lovely and you can start to see the shape now it comes in narrow here then expands out again ever so slightly probably about two inches and then just narrows down at the back again these obviously need to be a lot straighter but it's there it's getting there let's see how this looks on the bike And it's in place now. It's looking nice. I don't know, I mean, it's one of those things, I've become too familiar with it. 
Maybe that'll all change when I start changing the colour, putting primer on it because it's not going to be black. And I think my, my main issue at the moment is that it's black. The front half, let me show you. The front half, up to about there onwards, will be black carbon fibre. That'll be exposed carbon fibre with a high gloss lacquer on it. Then, sort of about here, there'll be a strip of dark grey going by. Then following this knee dent line up here, going across there, that'll be where the dark grey stops. And then from here onwards will be all light grey. I don't know what I'm going to do at the end. I don't know whether I'm going to re-expose that carbon fibre at the end. Maybe. I mean, that might be a nice touch. But that, I mean, essentially it's going to be mostly grey with a bit of black at the front, a bit of carbon fibre, and then the orange frame. I think that's probably what I'm going to really start enjoying the look at when it's finished. But look at that. What I mentioned before about leaving all the extras and whatnot here, I decided against it because it wouldn't fit. The frame literally wouldn't fit on. The tank literally wouldn't fit on the frame, so I had to cut those off. But they're cut off to where I want them to be cut off. And the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking it might be easy to actually put a, an aluminium tank lining on the inside, a fuel cell, and then connecting it at the top there. And you can see how exact the split mold picks everything up. You can even see my knife lines of where I drew the filler cap. And you can see how rough the seat was at the back here. It picks up absolutely everything. So when I come to actually making the final plug, this is going to have to be absolutely smooth. And this is it. Let me move one side. Can you see it? Can you see it? Let me move the light. I'm just going to sit here and to one side. This. No, shouldn't tap it. This is the prototype tank. It's in place. And as I said before, I'm pretty much back at square one where I'm left with all the imperfections that the clay had. But I wasn't expecting anything any different. I wasn't expecting some miracle for it to be completely smooth when it was in the uh, in the split mold. But it is all carbon fibre now. Carbon fibre? What am I talking about? It is all fiberglass now. So now the next step, which I'm going to do, probably start today. Um, no, no, I'm not going to start today because I have uh, this carburetor to sort out. This is the carburetor for the Myco 490. Uh, I'm actually going to be working on the Myco 490. I'm going to get this started and this carburetor is just glooped up, so I just need to clean this. So that is today's job after this. Uh, but yes, I am going to start using acetone filler on this, make it nice and smooth, get these lines, all these little lines here, perfectly smooth. I mean, you can, if you run your hands over it, you can feel all the imperfections. And then we'll be making a proper plug with proper stuff, not just laminating resin. We're going to be doing a whole series of layers and just getting 100% perfect slip mold but that is it uh, if you like what you see subscribe follow the channel on instagram as well because you'll get daily snaps of progression and amongst all this here but until next week's video i don't know what it'll be probably with myco we will see so until next week's video everyone stay safe out there really strange times at the moment everyone just stay safe bye, -bye.